Welcome to a short video on ETH Analyzer. My name is Scott Hopman, and I'm a technical consulting engineer with Cisco's data center route and switch team. This tutorial was created by myself and fellow TAC engineer Garrett Zundel in order to provide a brief introduction to ETH Analyzer's packet capture potential. ETH Analyzer is a Cisco Nexus capture tool based on the Wireshark open source code. It's a command line version of Wireshark that captures and decodes packets. You can use this tool to troubleshoot your network by analyzing the control plane traffic destined to or generated by the switch. The tool exists natively in the NXOS and is run on switch, printing directly to the CLI for immediate analysis, but also provides the ability to save and export the capture, allowing us to transfer the capture file to an external location for deeper analysis inside of the Wireshark application. We'll take a look at this process a little bit later on. The tool is also available on all Nexus platform switches, but for our purposes today, we'll focus on the Nexus 9000 series. Here is a look at our topology. We have three Nexus 9300s at a layer two broadcast domain. We've established OSPF neighborships between all three switches to provide some interesting control plane traffic to analyze. Let's take a look at the base command to initiate the tool. ETH analyzer, local, interface. We have the ability to capture CPU bound traffic on either the management or in band path with newer code points allowing you to capture on specific front panel ports. So here we can specify management, in band, or even front panel port ETH11. Here we'll choose in band to indicate CPU bound traffic from any front panel port. We'll also choose a display filter of ICMP. We'll discuss filter options in more detail later in the video. Lastly, we need to specify the number of packets to capture. Choosing zero indicates no limit and is the best option for live troubleshooting. Control C can be used at any time to end the capture when ready. I've mentioned this a couple of times already, but it's important to remember that ETH Analyzer captures only control plane traffic. Data plane traffic passing through the switch will not be captured. So to illustrate this key point, Let's take a quick look at an ICMP ping from switch 3, passing through switch 2, and landing at the CPU of switch 1. In our example, we'll want to see the capture results on all three switches. We'll use the command that we built earlier in the video to filter for ICMP, and we'll apply it to switch 1, switch 2, and switch 3. I've opened a second CLI session to switch 3 so that we can initiate our ICMP ping to switch 1 while still running the capture. So with our setup now complete, let's send our traffic. As you can see, we have sent five successful pings to switch one. Checking our captures, on switch three, we see five ICMP echo requests and replies. On switch one, we see the same five ICMP echo requests and replies. But on switch two, no packets were captured, since this traffic remained in the data plane of the switch and therefore not accessible by ETH Analyzer. Since I just finished proving to you that this tool doesn't capture data plane traffic, now is a good time to come clean. In certain platforms, we can configure a span to CPU to manually punt data plane traffic into the control plane, which means it can now be seen in ETH Analyzer. This is out of scope for this video, but if you'd like to learn more about this process, please take a look at fellow engineer William Brown's video on span to CPU. It's an invaluable technique, and William's tutorial is clear and easy to follow. In the previous example, we filtered for ICMP traffic, but an unfiltered ETH analyzer will capture all control plane traffic, such as CDP, spanning tree, ARP broadcast, any layer three protocol communications, etc. Here's an example of a wide open unfiltered capture. This can be helpful to get an overall idea of what is hitting the CPU. However, in a scenario where we need to focus in on specific traffic, a filter that limits our scope can provide an easier to consume capture free from the constant noise of traffic such as spanning tree. Consider a scenario where there is some issue with OSPF neighborships forming, or perhaps flopping. We may want to see just this protocol traffic. We can filter what ETH Analyzer captures with a capture filter, or allow ETH Analyzer to continue to capture everything, but only display and print to the CLI the OSPF traffic. Generally speaking, the display filter keywords are more intuitive than a capture filter. Here, we can simply configure for a display filter and use the keyword OSPF. 
Notice how much cleaner this capture is than the wide open capture we viewed earlier, allowing us to see just the OSBF traffic in the control plane. Since this device owns 10.10.10.1, we know that the highlighted hello packet was generated by us, while the other two sets of hellos from 10.10.10.2 and 10.10.10.3 are arriving to us from our OSPF neighbors. Here's an example of the same traffic with a capture filter. Notice how the filter keyword is different and far more complex. Because of this, it is generally best to use the display filter option as it is much easier to avoid a costly error in analysis due to a misconfigured capture. Another important feature for live CLI analysis is the detailed view of traffic. We can see this view by simply adding the detail keyword at the end of the command. This allows us to see deeper into each individual frame in real time and provides a view similar to what you would see in Wireshark itself, including a wide variety of header and protocol information. Now we have a good idea of how ETH Analyzer can be used during a live troubleshooting. So before we wrap up, let's take a quick look at the process of collecting a capture and moving it offline for analysis. We'll start with our base command, ETH Analyzer Local Interface. We'll choose end band to capture traffic to or from any front panel port, and we'll skip the filter option to run this wide open. Let's take a moment to discuss filter options when saving to a file. The display filter does not work for our purposes, as this only filters what prints to the CLI. It has no impact on what is actually captured inside of the file. We can either use the capture filter or run ETH Analyzer wide open without a filter. In many scenarios, it can be beneficial to run the capture wide open if you intend to analyze the data offline, as the capture has a broader scope, but can easily be parsed using the filters inside of the Wireshark application. Next, we need to indicate how many frames to capture. Unlike the live capture where we chose zero, here it is recommended to designate a specific number of packets and to allow the capture to run until complete, as early cancellation of the process with control C can result in a malformed or corrupted file. To give you an idea of a good number, TAC will often request a wide open capture of 50,000 packets to get a solid sample of the traffic on a busy switch. For demonstration purposes on this lab switch, I'll choose just 100. Next, we'll apply the write keyword to indicate that we want to write this to a file instead of viewing on the CLI. And lastly, we'll designate a location to save the file and a file name. We'll send this particular capture to BootFlash, name the file test11, and use the .pcap file extension. From here, the file can easily be moved using any number of file transfer methods, such as FTP, SCP, or even a USB stick. Viewing is as simple as opening the file inside of Wireshark. We are then free to parse the traffic however we'd like using the Wireshark filters. This concludes our tutorial on ETH Analyzer. Thank you for taking the time to view this video. We hope you found it enjoyable, and we wish you great success when using this powerful tool within your network.